operator is. So we're going to see that. But like the goal is define what the function operator is, see a few of them, and make a few examples. Like there's nothing really like um, oh, something in the chat. Start. Thanks, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> OK, start. OK, introduction. So a function operators is just a new fancy name for a function factories. It's uh, a way that you can like create a function that's going to return a function, basically. Um, and um, the same, I, I don't know about the characters in Python, so I can't help you on that. Uh, we already have like seen this example is very good. So basically, like I rem remember like to force stuff that we learned uh, last week, but seems important. And we're going to see like next in the code, they usually uh, force multiple stuff. So I don't know if we, this can be improved, but this, this bothered me a bit. Uh, yeah, it's it's fairly easy. So just to bother Steffi, it use cat instead of messaging. Uh, in, but basically what it does is like it's wrapping a function inside of making a new function, which use the idea of an anonymous function. So you are adding an anonymous function here. Uh, so you don't name it, I guess, for like simply, I mean, some uh, uh, code simplification. And it just like return your function um, with a small text. So it's just wrapping the, your function, creating a new function, which return a text. And the, the this example is really like good, I think, because it's basically like, uh, let's say like you want to have this function that generate like, uh, this is a power function, I guess. Uh, I mean, it's a square function, literally. And um, you see how uh, interesting this concept of function factories and your function operators play well with, um, oh, so I, I learned that the, the, they call that way, but like what's called higher order at function, that's functions that take function as input. So this is another like lingo. Uh, so if you pass them into like the map families or the apply families, then that's very like streamline your workflow. Sorry, can can we go through this more closely? Like yeah. what what is force doing? It just like runs the function? It's um it's um, I don't know if my English is correct, but it will make sure that's when the function is run, we are passing the F correctly at the time of the function is run and not at the time when the function was initialized. I guess you, you can say that it, it it evaluates the argument, like it forces to evaluate the argument yeah. when you are calling uh, the function. Calling the function, yes. Not building it. Because hmm. I think okay. it was like, like we can, we I mean, this is like really like, nearly everything that's important here. So let's go back to here, not that, not that it does not have, mm, still not doing it, still not doing it. Where it start doing it, not, still not. Well, I'm gonna, are we gonna see it? Still not. Do we will have an example first? Yeah, it's using it, but we don't mention it in the, uh, where is it? There was a force two slides back. Yes, slides back. 10 point five. Keep yes, going, keep force. going backwards, backwards, yeah. backwards. 10.5. Yeah, 10.5. Yeah. 10, oh yeah, okay. there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. 10 point, 10. I'm gonna go to 10.5, uh, no, no force. Oh wait, so, so use force, it said on the bottom, but. Oh, I miss it. Of 10.5, so use force. Unless you want it to change with the X apparent environment. So when you call the function, you never know what it's gonna be called. And the arguments, and I think force and force it to uh, to have your argument evaluated. And I think this was the example here. Yes, with x squared. So you have this power one function. And where would you use force in this in this example? Like where would the uh, line of force the go? The power one. Uh, where is it? this power one function? Where is it defined? Here. You will force uh, uh, be x after that. Like uh, we don't have line, but before the calling of the function, you will force exp here. But exp isn't a function. Exp I is think the, the problem. 
The problem here, I think, is you need to force it because what if you created another function with the same name? Um, and so if, if in our current example, not last week's example, X is a function that you've created in the environment and you don't force it, then you create this function operator, that's what we're yeah. calling it. And then you create a new function in your environment that has the same name. It's the same problem we had before where it's not exactly what you think that function that you're operating on is changing unless you use the force inside. Got it, okay. And that's basically like you want it to, I mean, you want to be, this is apparently a side gig of lazy evaluation. That's mean like when the arguments are called only when they are evaluated, but then uh, when do we, let's say X here, when X is evaluated here in this power, in this square one. So when we do square four, uh, I think this is correct. So X, so power one, the X, X equals three. Yeah, I, I'm lost a bit into that. We should like redo it slowly, no? Do we want to spend time on that? Yes, always, yes, but, let's do it. Um, but the, I think it's right. I mean, I think you're right that that's right because um, that the X gets evaluated, that the, sorry, that the X in power one is evaluated when you call the square function. So that's why it's three and not two. Exactly. And remember that functions X in this case is a number but functions are just like anything else in R. So X could be a function, X could be a number, X could be character, uh, all that kind of stuff. So in our new example, it's the same thing. It's just that it happens to be a function. Yeah. Should I go through it slowly? We can, I mean, we have like, or we can keep it for later as you like. Uh, well, let, let's let's go back and we can keep it for later. But I think it's very important. So you you're definitely correct. So we like um, they call it forcing, but uh, yeah, to evaluate it when the function was called. So when we call the power one the x, we evaluated um, x in some way. So when we uh, pass square four, which is a new hex, it's evaluated here, and square four will be 16 because like x passed was two here. And if you pass three, uh, three at square four should not be 16, no? Should okay. Be... okay, okay, so now, okay. So I understand how these functions work now and it's all coming back to me from yeah. last week, but here's my question. If we had used force in the power one function, what would have been different across these two functions? That's what I don't follow. Uh, if we had false at X. So it had said force X, like at the top yeah. line. Then that's would different. these have... Yeah, then they wouldn't have the... had different answers. What would the answer be, 16 or 64? Um, it would be what you would expect it to be. I'd have to look at the example again. <laughs> yeah, let me... Let, let, oh, no, let this one... We can... For that, I'm all into... So let's call it 409 here. And here we want to force X... Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is seems correct. So now let's go back to the example of forcing and try this one first. Okay. So no, <laughs> wrong copy paste. Yeah, copy the whole thing, maybe. Yeah. Maybe copy the whole thing. Yeah. Does it work? I never know if it works correctly. Okay. okay. So let's uh, let's try this one. Now let's inspect square. Okay. Seems. Uh, what value should we expect from X here? This is the question. Uh, so now we are like, let's do this one. So this is 16. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think this is because X was two. Yeah. So four should work. No, <laughs> sometimes I'm stupid, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so then what so, happens when you go X gets three and then square yeah, four? And then call so back square four. 
still 16. Mm -hmm. Because and I think this was it, it would be 64. Yeah. I'm sure of that. Wait, what do you think is 64? If, if we, we haven't used force. Forced it, mm -hmm. If we hadn't used force, the it would no longer be a square function. Right, it right, 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 right. function. Right, um, which is what it was last week. That. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. So pull on a force okay. here, and then let's do. I think one thing that might have made it a little bit simpler, um, I was thinking this example, I should have done it differently in my slides last week, because right now we're using X in two different ways. And so it's mm. a little confusing because we use X inside the function, but we also use X outside the function and they're not the same X. Right. So right. if we had said outside the function like A, then I think it would have been easier to follow. So sorry about right. that. I'll remember that for next time. Right, right, right. So yeah, let's pass it to... I uh, guess so. Now we are defining square, no force. No, that won't be a problem because if you you ha it only matters if you're passing um, an Variables. object. Oh right. yes, so yeah. Let's do it also with fully x here. Okay, so okay. and then let's try. Uh, Oh, sorry. Yes. So I guess when we call square no force, uh, it's uh, it's mm -hmm. called x finally, where x can be, and here x is three. And that makes sixty four. Mm -hmm. Well, it was good. It was good. So let's go back to uh, the function operators. So that's why here we are forcing f to be sure, like we are calling mm -hmm. it correctly. Uh, two functions, as an example. Uh, I don't know if there are more after that, or should I? Yes, they go a bit into it. So the safely and memoized, I didn't know any of them, so I I learned it quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> so the safely one is funny. It's basically like instead of returning just the results, it's gonna return a list of the results and a potential error. So here you have a list with a oops. And you're gonna just ask for some. Obviously, cannot process. Uh, oops. So if you uh, use a uh, um, a map function, a, a map uh, over x and sum, uh, it's return an error, and you are kind of trapped. <laughs> you and and to debug that means basically like um, I mean, if I, if I was like confronted with that problem previously without knowing safely, what I would have done, I will write a for loop. And I will check every of my uh, element of my list to see which one returned me an error. With this, you can just uh, run the safely, um, either like you run it first or you, you use it safely uh, inside of your map. You can just run safely, you wrap safely around like your function. So it's a new function that you are calling on map. And then instead of returning like the result, that instead of returning a sum, which returns just an argument, it returns sum and the potential error, which can be empty if you have no error, or can be a list with multiple others elements inside of this list. So then you can inspect the results of your map function. As well, like if you are happy with what you just extract the list of the results, or you inspect the error. And this, um, this this site, this is like quite up tricky because there is transpose here. But if I was using without transpose, I will just have uh, my list will be organized by um, results and error. Should maybe do it. Can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. The the remember uh, when we first started talking about map, we were talking about the tilde and when like. Um, when you kind of built your own function, like it yeah. was like 
the length of the unique or something like that, yeah. that we had to put a tilde. But it seems like safely is an exception to that. Uh, I think safe, basically like a safely return a function. So when you have like safely sum, what you have is a function. So you don't need the tilde here because like you are mm. not, okay. that it's, this is like, yeah, this is tricky because like the object you are returning is like, I mean, you can call it super sum if you want, but it generates it like on the fly instead of like creating super sum. So yeah, maybe maybe I went a bit fast here. So let's do that. Um, I, I'm gonna use that one too. Uh, and instead of just the transpose, oh, so why are you? I, don't try to make my life easier, please. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, safely is not loaded, so I need I need to load pure here. Library, I think it's three. Oops. And if you inspect out, let's, well, it's probably small, so I can just print it. Um, str out. Eh. It's just return like the list of results and error and not everything. And by the way, uh, I didn't load X. This is why I just have one. Should load that. Yeah, yeah, should be like the correct results out. Oops, sorry. Yeah, so we have a list and then we have the results, no error, the result, no error, the result, no error, no result, error. And the transpose, the, the magic to organize it is in transpose. Okay. Other pair function operators, I didn't try positively quickly and auto browsers uh, because I don't use too much browsers. This is something that you probably learn later to debug. I know what it does, but uh, I'm a I'm a simple man and I use print statements, but uh, I'm eager to be like more complex. Uh, let's move on. Uh, memory, so memory is quite funny because I didn't know also about it. Uh, so I definitely recommend like you go to the memoist package um, pages. So it's, it, it has two options it can. So basically what it does is like, if you call a function with a specific argument and you wrap it into the memoist uh, function, it's gonna, so it's, it, it generate like this, uh, you create a, so this is like, let's say you have slow function and you, this is a function that generate here. So it's a function you use memoys around here and it's gonna return your function, uh, fast function, which mean like it's basically like um, auto browser looks pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's too advanced for me, but yeah, I will definitely look at it later. Um, so, um, so it's still the same function, but what memoys does is like it can cache uh, the previous information if you already run the function to rerun it and you can cache it either on your memory or RAM or you can cache it on disk. So this is like, this is not, this was not done in the book, but basically like um, it's show you here, like if you run it first, well, it take the exact time, but then if you recall fast function, which was like the same function, but memoized, uh, you will save time because it's already have stored the results of it because it's now all you call the function with which argument. So it's basically instead of like rerunning it, everything, it stored the result somewhere with the exact arguments where you call the function and reuse it. Uh, and obviously it's bad because of side effects and you shouldn't use, this is what the, uh, so imperf, imperf function have functions that have side effects because let's say like uh, it cannot track the result of side defects. Let's say you have built a function that lists something in a directory and uh, you modify the, and you are gonna call like um, to this function, the list of the directory. If you modify the list of the directory and call again the same function, uh, it will still think you are calling it from the list of the directory, but what's inside of the list of directory have changed and memories have no way to track that. Does it make sense? No. I, I'm not uh, sure I totally understand this function. Like it's like, it's like rerunning the function without rerunning it or something? No, it's, let's let, let um, can I, I can give an example. Um, yeah. I use it, 
I use it in, and I have a package that is used to access um, Canadian weather API. Okay. And so you say, I want to download the weather data from the station for these dates. And I've used memoirs on my internal functions so that if you run that function twice with the same inputs, it will say it actually caches what it received from the internet the first time. So what it says is, okay, okay, well, with the input of this station and this date, I have, I, re I return these data. And then if you rerun it, it checks and it says, okay, I've already used this date and this station. I already have this data the like, cache on the hard drive or in memory. And so instead of rerunning the API call, it just returns the data from the previous run. So essentially it caches the output given the argument inputs. Does that yeah, make sense? But, yeah, yep. but this one is dangerous because if the internet changed, I mean, if your API target changed, yeah. it and will so return you can... what you cache it, which is yeah, exactly. good and bad. Like it's and good so mine because- is... Yeah, I was gonna say mine has like a time limit. So it oh. will it only caches for a certain amount of time. Um, and you and you can, Memoirs has arguments so you can say how long it should cache for. And that's just, because sometimes people will rerun things like, you know, three times in a row. I do it all the time when you rerun a script and I just didn't want the API server to be hit every single time. And then also sometimes it's it's a longish run that doesn't need to be rerun within 10 minutes. So data's not gonna change in 10 minutes kind of thing. Yeah, I use target for the kind of same of ID. Target is going to store an RDS file or, yeah. or whatever you want. Like it can be another kind of file. And then in, it, it checked the date and the checksum of the file to see if the file has been updated. That so does work, of... but only if your API also has something it can check against, which isn't, yeah. unfortunately, always an option. Yeah, and so you need like also my pack, yeah. to update. And my package is not used by people who use targets for sure. So it's it's just a nice little thing. Anyway, yeah. anyway, that's just an example. I can't promise you that I'm using it in this way, but that's an example of how I've used it. But um, I think the example like Adlai uses is very good here. And uh, it's on simulation. Like if you set your seed and you run like a uh, uh, run if, uh, run, uh, R, 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 not run if, R uniform or R poison, uh, po po poison, poison is French. So I should use the French word. Uh, and then, and you set the seed, it should always return the same uh, distribution. But running a bunch of distribution is expensive. So if you have the same seed and you are like, just want to run the statistical distribution, that's, you can you can also catch it in some way. And target do the same, it cache, it stops somewhere a part of the information. So you don't need to run the computation. It's always a trade off. Like, do you want the computation or do you want the, um, to store it somewhere? uh exercise oh that safely works so um and yeah we can go into it so it's basically like it's a function that's going to return a function and the 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 magic is done by capture error as in uh, are they mentioned which is kind of tricky because capture error is not exposed to the users you need to ask it's a function that's loaded by the package. Um, I think it's inside of pure, but like not uh, available by the user. So you need the three dot to, inv to investigate it. Sorry, and can you tell me, I've seen that before, but I've never understood it. What does the three dots do? I mean, so when you load a package, uh, basically what you are loading is a namespace. So it's kind of a specific, I mean, in my mind, it's an environment that lets you access specific object and to subject our function or data. And uh, if it's exported in the namespace, like the basic namespace name, you can access uh, the function uh, by uh, asking, this is my environment, let's say like deep liars, and I want to access mutates, let's say, and then you do semicolon, semicolon, mutate. Note some package like authors are, are gonna write some other function, like for example, capture error, uh, let me, I see, no, yeah. Like an internal function? Yes, it's an internal function. That's not okay. exported to the users. But sometimes you want to inspect it or even use it. Uh -huh. okay. uh, and for that, you use these three semicolon operators. Got it. Great, That's, thank you. And I think basically, like, I mean, we, we could look at what the three colon operators does, but I think it's going to go, like, go into that name space and extract me that object, which is in function and display it to me. Right. Great. Thank you. And what's 
So capture what it does, it's use try catch. We already seen it. And it's gonna it's gonna return um if uh, something is not wrong, it's it's return a message error and it lists the results and the error. That's how it works. So that's how we have this list list element with a result and an error. It's it's the list with two elements. And I guess error is is also like could be like a list also. So this was cool. Uh, I definitely recommend also like, because uh, I do not think like they went through it, but you should also check vectorize. I mean, we can do it now. Uh, the trick part, like what's bothered me for at least uh, two minutes on vectorize is vectorize is capitalized. <laughs> the first letter is capitalized. So I was typing vectorize, uh, vectorize, vectorize, and this is capitalized. So it's, it's a, uh, just so you know, uh, and it's the same. So it's basically take a, a function and it's create a function uh, that's become victorized and you can pass arguments. You can, I didn't play with simplify equal true. So I don't know. And I didn't play too much with username equal true, but you should try. Uh, we can try like, so I have done this ex example here. So you can, there, so. If people like me do not know do what's red in does, I, you can do it. So it's basically repeats uh, something uh, x time. So if I, and it's a funny one, cause like if we do red int, like it take also like nah, and I want it seven times. It's a nah, 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 but a red int is, uh, it's it's quite powerful. So let's see. You can even do that. I tested it. That's why I know. You can do Batman, the famous one. And you can also pass it on here. Yeah. You want seven times one. And it's it's quite powerful. Uh here, one more. And then you do na 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 Batman as I as the as a joke is, is running. So it's you can also like kind of uh, adapt it. But if you vectorize it, uh, you're going to see the result of it. And it's right on the list, basically, most of the time. Where is it? The example, oh, it was in the previous one. If I do the vrep one, and the example is quite good here, it's going to return like one, four times, two, three times, three, two times, and four, one time. So it vectorizes one of the others. I it on the list. So definitely can be useful. Um, so yeah, explore it and do the, I, I learn a lot usually doing the example. No, let's do case studios. So the others have done it a bit. I also prepare it so we can look at it. Uh, so basically like, let's say you want to uh, download a bunch of file, which happen to be HTML and I, I I slightly changed the example because I wanted to have persistent data. Oh, someone's in the chat. Yeah, vectorize seems very good, but like, uh, I will say like, uh, this is kind of the base R function where you always need to be a bit aware and mindful about all the under weird stuff, but yeah. <laughs> And uh, that's my, my take on that. But, uh, and remember, this is like, I think this is a common team into base R, uh, I ordered function. So they have also map with a capital M and also like reduce with a capital R. All the higher ordered function in base R are capitalized first letters and vectorized, I guess, is in the same family. So this is the logic being it being capitalized. Um, so here we are like producing like, uh, so the case is like you are want to download file. So yeah, you have already a nice um, stuff. It download is a temp here, here. Cause Adlai is super nice guy. You don't want to bother us with, um, with, with messy file. And then uh, let's say like you want to have a small delay uh, before downloading it. So it creates a function. That's also, that's gonna return a function too where you can pass basically like your download file into it. And you set a certain amount of time, the system will slip to run. I, it's give a quick example with the runny function. You, uh, it's gonna take more time if you, 
So you are passing delay by run if, and now like instead of having run if, you are like having a new run if function uh, that's uh, that's running. Like I should do that instead. So not this one. I always go for terminal. Sorry. Uh -huh. So let's close that. So I for this and because like I wanted to exercise, I I create a small fun, uh, a package called funfac. Uh, and fun fact uh, is just like the the function of Adley. You can check it here. It's just this function. So I have them loaded because like I wanted to be them loaded instead of like me highlighting them, loading them. So if I go in some notes, run fun fact, and um, if I fun fact, um, see you have the semicolon here <laughs> as a double semicolon. And if I call it delay, uh, delay by, and we can call the function to see what's inside. This is the, the same function. So, and if you run like in uh, this delay by run if function, I think this is this one. So, because like this is kind of like, I mean, the first time I I I, I read it, I have kind of like a node. I mean, I, I need to type it. It's got to return the function too. And this is this function that we are passing the 100. I mean, I'm not going to pass 100, but to be too big, let's say 10. And it's run the um, uniform function 10 times. I mean, it's, it generates a sample from the uniform function 10 times. Which of course should have been obvious. I mean, I'm I'm trying to figure this out as you're going through it. And like, it should have been obvious because that parenthesis 10 means that whatever came right before it is a function. Yeah. But yeah, that's but sort I, of mind blowing. It, it's obvious, but it's kind of like very concise. I will say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, totally. So that's it. Um, so as you see, well, we didn't see the delay here. Like, let me like, let's see if the delay is more fragrance. It should be 10 seconds. And yes, I mean, a little. Uh, okay. Then this is another like function that's dot every, uh, that generate dots uh, for every file downloaded. Um, so here I, I, I added more file. I just went to the cron task view because apparently people didn't know what the cron task view is. So this was a good example to go into cron task view and, and take a bunch of other like package from, I should have put that into a function. So I'm not tapping it. So you get you all. And then, um, we're gonna pass. Oh, well, I could have done that too. But like, if we, if we go into this one, we're gonna pass the dots to download file. So we're gonna wrap basically like dot every 10. I'm gonna change that because I have, do not have 10 file uh, and delay by, so I can change. So we are like just gonna pass that. It's gonna work normally here. And just, I'm gonna do a dot for every one. No, oh, yes, by not doing stuff. Not gonna work. Uh, so I have nothing in data. This is so instead of having Tom Deere, uh, I created data folders. So uh, I know where it is and I can delete it. And then you see one. It should we should have five dot because oh a bit more. One two three four five no five six. One two three four five. One two three four five. Yes it's five yeah. I'm just have trouble counting them. Uh, I sh we can probably like change uh, the function to to counts. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. You can do a bunch of funny stuff with that. Uh, then we have a nice question on the exercise. Uh, now, should should you memorize five download? Why and why not? I think we already answered that question. So yes, if you want, if you share like the. I'm pretty sure, like for example, the HTML that I'm getting here on download file will not change. But if you want to download a new file, uh, they are not gonna work. Okay. So no, it's still not my terminal. Sorry, I have like reflex of opening terminal every time. Uh, let's go into the book now because like we have more. Ideas. So that that's it for me. I mean, that's it for like presenting the chapters. Now we have exercise. So if, if people have other like stuff to do, they can definitely go. If not, we can try an exercise uh, to around it. And I have like I have a, a beginning of working solution, so that's good. But like, uh, let's go into uh, 
I mean, I can go to advanced, yeah. advanced, uh, sorry, I'm moving you, advanced R, but I don't want the book club, I want just the book, Adley. I'm gonna find it. Okay, and then, So uh, doing uh, com with its function operators, let's go to exercise at the end. So one exercise is uh, create a function operators that report whenever a file is created or deleted in the working directory. And we had a tip using dir and set diff. So I, I'm, I'm gonna sh display my screen so we can use that. So we are inside of VS Code, uh, which is very similar to our studio, posit, whatever. It's like here we have an R console. The file structures is like um, very similar. I, I, I do a quick make file. That's basically like uh, create my small package and delete stuff. So for example, uh, right now I have like this. So if I go into the, I mean, I can also go do that into R. I can call a system. Oops, sorry, it's just like to be faster when we're gonna do tests. So I've do, uh, I'm gonna call make and run my clean, which is basically like removing the data that I downloaded. So we can test very test faster. So the always goal is testing faster and do stuff. So I like make file for that, but like um, also have other preference. Uh so yes, and so the example is like we can use dir. So if I do dir, and for example my messy pass, it's for an example it's empty. So yes, um, if no, if I rerun like this function, and I do the same dir it has a bunch of HTML. So, oh, can we use also set diff? Do we, do we ever know set diff or not? Or should we look into it? So dear, if I do, uh, against what should I do dear like here? Can't you put in just dir parentheses and then dir my messy path? I want to show you. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. Yeah, what's what's sh what should we capture here to get the difference between these two operations? Well, let's let's do an easy a, a simple one. Sure. Uh, let's do let's say like currently the goal of this exercise is writing a function around like a download function, for example, or a create function that's gonna list what the change of the download function does or the create function. Yeah. Let okay. me let me we can do that for example file create and we can create this one uh, we can create in data a bob html. Uh, so you you have to call there like before and after you, you make a change is yes is that so, it? and then set the on that right? Let's let's clean the mess. Oops. Uh, so we want to call the, we, we need to produce a function that's going to call before the function we're going to wrap around it, but it's going to list what's inside of dir and mm -hmm. what's going to list after. So I, I'm going to call that old or past uh, and dear my messy pass. And then I'm gonna call new. So this let's 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 do that here. Currently, let's abstract. I mean, this is how I will do it. Like first, we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna do new. Uh, dear, and still my messy pass. And we're gonna see like oh, we've, and then we're gonna set a set diff, and I don't never know what the order of set diff is in the diff, <laughs> so I'm gonna ask it. Uh, so set diff x and, and y. Uh, and 
I don't think it matters. You don't it... think it matters? Well, let's see. Because it's, yeah, because it's difference between sets. So it will just list it. Let's see. It won't have like a, like a oh, I minus. I need to generate them. So all is good. Then I, I create my file. Then I create new. And then I do the set diff. Nothing. Well, Bob is here. So if I, I ask for new, I have Bob. Um, so let me try. What this. happens when you type old? What? Type old in your console. Old hmm. is empty right now. Yeah, yeah, which it should be, right? Yeah. So for some reasons, because if I do new old, yeah, I have the correct differences. Oh, I guess it matters. And yeah, set diff. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. I always, I always I, I, I was just. It before, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. A set difference should be a set difference. Like, yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we I've can used like... it many times. Like, <laughs> We can also yeah. do that, like if you want a diff uh, uh, one to two, and then one to three. No, it's two sets. But I guess there is a difference when you say like what is in A that's not in B, versus what is in B that's not in A. Yeah, those are different questions. Yes. So I guess it would make sense yes. that it's directional. Yeah. Yes, but yes. union is probably. Well, union and intersection won't matter. Yeah. Oh no. Let let me let me read the story. Perform set union intersection, which is asymmetric. Different. Yeah. Yeah. So union is symmetric, but uh, intersection, I guess, and difference are asymmetric. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Yep. Uh, okay. So we are here. So we know, like now, it's the. Uh, is it good? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so what should my function operator look like? I'm looking at the chats. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, but yeah, if you add NA direct, it would be like super messy. Like, <laughs> don't do an example with NA. It's too dangerous. <laughs> NA is too dangerous. Anyway, uh, so um, let's... Uh, let's let's inspire us with that. This one, no? Okay. Um, so we're gonna call our function. Um, like the 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 question asks you if you delete and create a file. For a moment, let's go with just add a file, and then we can maybe change add file. This is how I will do it. I will start by adding. Then I will modify like maybe uh, a create uh, delete and then see what I'm doing. So add file. It's gonna be a function. It's take a function. I don't think it. Um, I guess it should take a pass. No. For sure. example, my messy pass. Yeah. And then uh, this is here. Well, I copy pass all my mess. And no, it's not anymore like the false pass. So I'm forcing the function. I'm forcing the pass. I'm organizing the mess. What about the file create or whatever? This is Besides, the function. The... Oh, that goes in the argument. So I then. guess here yeah, I should pass the function here. No, I should exe execute my function, f. And what should I do now? Uh... Because if I do that, I don't think I return anything, no? Um, <laughs> oh, so, because set diff, I, I'm going to do a message. This one I'm going to have to define. Message, like that, yes. Let's be very, um, was, what time is it? Yeah, let's be very, uh, so. And then um, I'm going to create my function, my new function. I'm going to call 
test that file. Very original. Uh, um, that's gonna take add file. Mm -hmm. uh, did it generate you add file? No, I don't. And then I'm gonna pass it file create. And the pass file uh, file create. And my pass is my messy data. My messy pass. My messy pass. Okay. But don't you have to have, don't you have to have the URL somewhere? Uh yeah, it's my That's messy it. pass. No, no, the URL, the oh, um... uh, uh, yeah, I'm just creating file. We could also like download uh instead of like file create, I could also do that. Uh, right, right, right there. Uh yeah, that add file is going to return the function, and then we'll have to call the function with the name of the file that okay. it's going to be created. Yeah. But that we could go, inside of doing PyCreate, I could go with download file, and then I will probably need more arguments, no? But that's good okay. test. We can try yeah, that. that okay, so let's, let's stick with this one. Stick with this one, yeah. Yeah, okay. So tests. And then if I inspect tests, Add file, this is a new function. Um, so let me clean my mess first. I mean, why not? We don't need to clean the mess. So let's test um, because, so tests add file and I'm gonna uh, do that in data and I'm gonna go with, I have Bob, so I'm gonna get build HTML. Well, you won't care about too much about the extension. So it print the message beach H bill HTML. That's not very nice. Uh, <laughs> so I guess we can sprint F the other way. Uh, oh. um, string is created. And this is not a dot, it's a, sorry, I usually have a French keyboard. Uh, then I'm gonna run that. Oh, I put an error. I think I'm lost in stupid parentheses. Where is, yes. There's one more at the end, yeah. yeah. Here. Did I run it? Okay. No. Eh. No, I have an error somewhere. Uh, let's let's be now. You have four at the end. You should have three. At oh the end. yeah, and it, the see the idea is smart enough to say Olivier, this is wrong. <laughs> okay, so if I check quickly test that file, no, I have my message, and if I run, I already have a bill, so. Uh, Cats. Cat HTML is created. And I have no cat HTML file. Mm -hmm. So we have three minutes. How can we implement in the same time here the <laughs> delete file? So you um... I didn't. I I I went just that no. way. This is what I've done. Can you you don't need to change anything in the well no because the set different one work because you could right. just like uh add another add another function with the same math file but instead of file dot create I don't know if there's a file dot delete that we can yeah there is a file delete well we can check. I don't know. I use the shell a lot for this kind of operation. Find it. No, let's ask <laughs> file create and maybe they're going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Us. See also. File remove. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so change file. It's, it's yeah. just for like the sake of uh, being more like some communicative. So yeah. would you, would you, 
would you put like I don't know like the size of or the union I, I don't I don't know like I don't know yeah can, you could uh, yeah, let's you, let's you let's could, go slowly you could do let's the, go slowly the and it's on the message line it's on the message line that I would oh the message that is created yeah you need to change that yes but let it be go the Okay, I, I, I said like before, I will like probably do that and try fi file remove. Oops, sorry. So, because I do not have much experience on file remove uh, and I'm gonna remove data, uh, I could uh, cat. So, all. Okay, you need the path. I think it's good. It's return true. I could do a check on that, yeah. by the way, also. Uh, and stop if I um if it's not true. And new. So now if I do a set diff uh, here, this is also like a bit cumbersome. No, I would like my set diff here and maybe call it. Uh, like you need yeah. to read the message to know what the logic is. Yeah. Um. So, but like for now it's good because like we are running out of time. Yeah. Uh, but set diff here, it's not good. I it's think it will have to be zero. union, like the first argument of set diff, the union of the two. Yeah. Of, and then yeah, exactly. the second That's argument the intersection. Yeah. So. Um, I would do the union of set diff new comma old comma set diff old comma new. Union of set diff. No, I, I will do union first and then new comma old. Do, um... New comma old. And parenthesis set diff old comma new. Set diff. That's what I would do. Uh, old comma new. Yeah. Doesn't that get yeah, both? Let's of them? see what's like. Well, I'm running and we're going to see what's happening. So uh, cat HTML. So that's good. Because this one is returning like cat HTML and this one is returning nothing new. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Okay. So that's it. Well, this was all uh, all about it. I think it's good <laughs> to do some, some example like that. That was a good example. Thank you, Olivier. Yeah. That was great. And... Uh, and the, the good point is like this function, if we generalize it a bit, it's uh, it's useful when you download stuff to print. Mm -hmm. Instead of like before I will have done in, let's say like in my for loop, or I will have create a special function that's download and also um, print the message like, no, I can just have a function that I just choose one instead of like every time I download a file, create a specific function to download and print something. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's powerful. So that was it. Um, cool. So and uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna post in the chat. Maybe not today, but uh, or today later. Bye everyone, and thanks for coming. Oh, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Chat. 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 Stop sharing. Uh, stop. Bye everyone. End.